being a theologian and sister, ah, I love that I both can bring my life, my religious life, into conversation with theology and to ask theology questions that come from experiences with the people, with the cries, with the environment, with the realities of the day, and that religious life is always part of it, that my vows ask questions of theology, that how we live community and build a global community asks that. And then on the flip side, I love that theology asks questions of my religious life. Theology, you know, again, has the conversation of who is this God that is so intimate to you? And what does that look like in the way you pray, in the way you live community, in the way you seek out where to serve and how to serve? Theology uh, puts words onto experiences. So how do we build a global community? What does synodality have to do with religious life? Um, what does it mean um, that the community has to be more than your religious community, but that God created all, and so I'm invited to all and to build that kind of unity. So uh, theology asked me to say to my religious life, ah, common good, communio, communion, participation, what does it look like on its feet? What does it look like as you ponder, as you pray? So it's actually a beautiful dialogue and conversation. So one forces me as a religious to look out into the world, my moral life, the social ethics, and the other one has me looking at what grounds my theology, what grounds it, and where are the longings. Because I find the, the longings of my colleagues are also the longings I have, and yet we live them in their own way. find ways to ask the theological questions, and actually we really must ask theological questions in the language of the people, right? In the language of where we are. So for example, the questions in our world uh, of belonging. Who belongs? Who belongs to what society? Uh, how do you determine citizenship, really, when we're all to belong to one another? So those kinds of languages, we could use the language of community, we could use bigger theological language, but, but actually these are questions everyone's asking right now. Uh, COVID has forced us to ask questions about the meaning of life, the meanings, and how do we look at this, and what's the search? So there may be many words for God. There is no one word for God. It's, and in fact, at some point, we have no words. We can only find ourselves uh, desiring to be one and in communion. So you know, where do we ask the questions that matter? Um, will also be on what edges that we are. So, you know, what are the theological questions I hope we're asking at this um, gathering? And that we are, really, are how do we use, uh, offer our lives? How do we serve? How do we find ways to link with one another? Um, ultimately, they're questions about love. Um, where are we called to love? How do we love? And where is love absent uh, that, that we can enflesh, incarnate? I think we have global questions to ask that, you know, what does it mean to care for the earth community? What does it mean to care for the people that are often invisible? I think religious have an obligation actually to be engaging and converted in this moment, uh, because the church and world is being asked for conversion and transformation and recreation. And so it's, it's a wonderfully divine and creative time. Uh, it's a great question. It depends on where you are, actually. So in some parts of the world, you can have a doctorate and you cannot get a position. 
So, uh, and it could be threatening uh, for a woman religious to be a PhD, have a doctorate, uh, and, and for some men that they would feel that they would be, that questions can't be offered and, and things like that. So I think some of this is trying to level some of the, the ministry fields and having people learn what it is to take the gifts of women seriously. I think another part of the world uh, to really bring in your theological lens as a woman gets questioned. So to bring in narratives, which in many places, narrative theology is uh, respected, and to bring in the stories, which women religious do all the time, uh, within uh, an academ academic discipline can get questioned. And yet, that's actually one of the gifts that you bring, is that we have the narratives from the people and then engage them and embrace them theologically. Uh, in some places, uh, one of the challenges for women religious theologians are the authority structures uh, that are in place that um, don't allow, really, uh, freedom of writing and publishing. And so part of religious life and really the vocation of a theologian is to be grounded in the tradition, to really know your tradition is steeped in it and to be attentive to the growing edges of the tradition. That, for me as a moral theologian, as a social ethicist, I need to know the tradition and in hearing the people in the earth and knowing you know, our documents to say, what's calling, what's calling? Because theology is essentially, any work of God is essentially creative. Uh, it'll build on what is and move us to what's calling. So it's really part of the vocation, the charism of a theologian, uh, which is always dynamic, always engaged. So there are places where those areas really get questioned. I think another piece could be when, um, and it's not simply women religious, but if the women religious are going to be on those peripheries, uh, existential as, real, as well as real, we're, we have to ask questions that are troubling. And actually, the church should be able to hold the questions. That's how we raise people, that you should be able to ask any question, because there's enough in it, in the tradition, to be able to encounter it and also to move forward. And so I think Pope Francis has been a delightful uh, gift, you know, in, in this moment as well, saying, I'm not afraid of the questions. Uh, the fear is when we don't ask them or we silence them. And so we're at a time where, it, you know, we have this tradition that certainly it was a phrase post-Vatican II that people heard all the time, ad experimentum, try it, engage it. Let's see, how do we bring together Bible and social teaching and the earth and, and the different disciplines because we're, Pope Benedict said, we should not be afraid of any of those pieces. And, and so how do we bring those forth and do it collaboratively? I think another area, uh, really, that women religious, uh, many of the ones I work with, uh, enjoy is that we don't simply work in our silos, but we desire to work collaboratively. I love working with the team. Certainly it makes it more challenging in some ways because you're constantly working with each other's lenses, but it, it's always made for something better. And I say, I think um, there's still too much in theology that's done in silos, and that's even the hope for this time, that we'll find ways to enrich one another. But I think uh, there's a collaborative lens that's, I think, built on our, our desire for community that's not only internal to religious life, but that's external, that community we learn about community from others, but, but it's really a way of doing theology that says we learn from one another, we collaborate, we engage. And again, the synodal document, the, you know, and the whole process is asking us to work together uh, with all people and to walk together and it, we will encounter our wounds. And so that's another area. Can we talk about those painful spaces? in our lives and in our church, but we'll also be offering one another as we walk esperanza, hope, hope, ways, you know, what is burning in your heart as you're walking, and what do you long for, and we'll help each other along the way. I, I think 
The synodal process is a great image for the theology we're asked to do. We're going to learn it as we walk, as we walk with one another and respond to what's in our midst and everywhere else. So they're both the, the challenges and the opportunities of this time. Well, something like this has never been done. <laughs> so we were actually finding names, going to religious superiors everywhere and saying to the leaders, who are your women religious who are theologians? Because we've had generations of women religious theologians and they have done so much good and are still doing it. But we're going, where's my age group? Where's the age groups below me? And we need to find ways to work together. So it was really a, a lot of work to try, try to find names. And to, because we want to find people across the globe. Every continent is represented. And so the hope is that both this group will start naming. At lunch the other day, I said, we are looking for theologians from the Congo with a doctorate and under the age of 60. And, and somebody said, well, I could get you a few names. So I think that's a piece of it is to really build on that. Our hope is that people will go back to their regions and reach out to one another. Right? So not just the group, but also say, ah, you know, we, I was at this gathering and we started talking about this and this. And then so even regionally, some of this energy goes. And then we hope to find another year, another cohort to do this with. So we really are learning the, the whole way. And what we might find was helpful here will be different for next year. And I think that's the gift of it, um, is to say, here's what, and, and we will certainly be asking the women theologians present here, um, game us, what, what next? And the other piece is what, one of the major questions we're trying to engage here is, what is our call as women religious theologians for religious life in this time? We do our theology in our disciplines, but how can we serve religious life? Uh, and so from all the continents, and I, I hope that we'll also be hearing from the different parts of the world saying, what, what's the longing you have and that we can respond? So uh, Sister Pat Murray, the first day we were here said, you're the founding members of this group, you know, of this women religious theologians group. I, but it's the first members. There's more, we, you know, to, to build this circle, this community that will be able to help one another. And so with the people here, the hope is that we will be linking with one another and that we'll add more people each year. And that will, as Gemma said too, encourage the next generations uh, and as Julia had said because it's really important for us to offer our theological gifts to religious life because so much uh, is in bud right now. One, I would say thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for encouraging and listening to the women religious theologians that you have in your midst or across the continent. Second, I would say, please let us know who the women are in your communities. Uh, tell us um, who they are so that we can be in touch. Three, tell us what your needs are too. What do you need? How can we serve you so that we can be pondering through our lenses? Four, Please, please, um, not just for the, the doctorates in theology, but, but please for this time that ecclesially is in motion, that religious life-wise is in motion, that actually politically, economically, socially is in motion. We need to move ahead as a world um, and in our locales with solid theological grounding. It's not theory on its own. Everything we do should have some application. So please, to your newest members, to the sisters who've been finally professed and are in their areas doing so much, do ongoing education, please. And, and please, uh, 
bring forth the next generation of theologians. Uh, they have offered much, and we will offer what we can. So thank you, encourage, engage, and let us know.